hello guys and welcome back to the channel now guys i am bringing you this story because it speaks primarily to an aboki dollar passage that these are fulanis we have long suspected have been using to funnel money out of nigeria so i shall discuss this in more detail at the end of the video or towards the end of the video but first i bring you this niger republic alerts federal government of 1.7 million dollars cash in mainas naime home so that's the headline niger republic alerts federal government of 1.7 million dollars cash in mainas naime home so that's n i a m e y i think that's the capital of niger republic apologies if i didn't pronounce that too well but let's get into the body of the story the nigerian government has been alerted by the nigerian authorities over a 1.7 million dollar cash found in an apartment believed to be owned by arrested former chairman of pension reform task team abdul rashid mayna mayna who sneaked into the country from dubai to avoid getting arrested is under investigation for alleged mismanagement of over 24 billion naira pension funds whilst in office recall that 29 assets what uh, 1 billion naira also suspected to be owned by him have already been seized it's been reported that the apartment the money was discovered in was one of Mayna's hideout and he might also get probed on why one of his nephews Sadiq Abdullah Ishmaila was almost tortured to death over how 1.7 million dollars got missing from a safe house the 1.7 million dollars was stashed in an apartment in Niger Republic which was being occupied by a Nigerian. So far, a trail of the cash by security agencies has linked Mayna to the cash because the apartment was alleged to be his hideout. Detectives are working around the clock to uncover where the suspected pension cash was sourced and how it was ferried to Niger Republic. One of the clues being probed was the allegation that Fisal Mayna, the son of the ex-pension reform task force chairman, moved the cash from Nigeria to Niger Republic. Responding to a question, the source added, investigators have also discovered that Mayna allegedly influenced the arrest and torture of one of his nephews, Sadiq Abdullah Ismaila, over a missing $1.7 million. Sadiq, who later released a video clip of his ordeal, asked Bena to turn his searchlight on his son, Fisal, and wife, an authoritative source said. Sadiq Abdullah Ismaila, who released a video on his ordeal over the missing cash, is reportedly being pressured by relatives to go underground to save Mayna. The missing cash has been linked to Mayna's sudden reappearance in the country. In the video obtained by a reporter, Sadiq said, I am a nephew of the expansion boss Abdul Rashid Mayna. Well, a lot has been happening lately. For those of you that know me very well, a lot has been happening. I know some of you know everything that has been going on and I haven't come out to say a word about it yet. But I figured it is high time I come out to speak about it. Why? It is because I felt for the safety of the people around me, especially my family and others. Well, I was abducted by Abdul Rashid Bena, my uncle, for three days and I was tortured for something I didn't do. He accused me of taking $1.7 million of his, which his son took, from his house, his son and his wife too. I have been paying for $1.7 million that is not with me. The funny thing is that this man has been sending people after me, my family and friends. And for me, I don't really care because I have seen it all. There is nothing more he can do to me because I have already endured three good days of torture from somebody I looked up to. He is somebody I point out to be a father figure to me, somebody who is the immediate brother of my mom. Let me make this video short. Abdul Rashid Mayna, if you think your money is with me, I told you, go and meet your wife and son. The $1.7 million, you said you got it whilst washing toilet. I don't know 
where they pay in dollars for washing toilets. I don't know where you got the money from, but I know for sure the way you learn that money and you know I know that. That is why you wanted me dead. I just survived because it was not my time when you asked those hoodlums claiming to be DSS operatives to torture me for a good three days. I almost died but it was not my time. For you now to be sending people because I have been quiet about it. I have been quiet about it because your mom, our grandmother, begged me to keep the issue as a family issue. So now this is now the narrative now that is coming out of that uh, Mena camp. This is a guy of course that was uh, found to have helped himself to a good 24 billion naira of pension funds and this is the most cruel of things as well uh, uh, by the way because these pension funds of course are set aside for people who have served the country for a good like at least 25 years of their life i imagine for them then in the later years of their life to have something to fall back on as a gratuity and a continuous monthly payment from the government this is what the pension fund is for but this guy of course just helped himself to it apparently allegedly he has not been prosecuted in the court of law yet but then of course he absconded so him absconding and not facing the law is already an indictment on him but we set that to one side because of course i started this uh, narrative about the aboki dollar passage that they used to funnel money out of the country now there's been a long-standing suspicion that that open border in the northern regions is just a free uh, exit of uh, wealth out of the country of nigeria effectively because of course there are no borders in the northern region of uh, of the country even the uh the army chief uh, said so some time ago that when they were going around to explain to the people living in that part that uh, there is a border here that they just laughed at them and said how can i live on this side of the village my relative live on that side of the village and you are telling us that it's two different countries get away my friend so there's no borders really in the northern parts of nigeria so when these people when they get all this money that they've looted from niger delta oil wealth they just immediately convert it to hard currency because of course they find safety in hard currency because they like everyone else don't really have any real faith in the nigerian uh, currency which may or may not fall at any point in time especially if the country goes to pot so there's no faith in that currency because of course the country is an unstable country and you can't put faith in the currency of an unstable country so what these people do is they loot all this wealth in naira convert it into dollars take it in hard cash and funnel it to all these um, satellite um, African nations in the northern parts of the country, especially Niger Republic, especially because the ties of this uh, Fulanese is uh, strong in Niger Republic. Even uh, Sani Abacha himself is actually from Niger Republic, he's not a Nigerian, so he was a foreigner ruling Nigeria for a good few years. So the ties with Niger Republic and all of that is very strong and they all own properties there so what they simply do as i said is they convert this uh naira that they that have uh, purloined and corruptly taken off the nigerian state into hard currency and they then funnel that hard currency in cash into their apartment in all this especially in the j republic and of course they do it in an army convoy so this has long been a suspicion of many people within the nigerian state and now we are now getting trickles of evidence to buttress this suspicion that we have always had that these people convert money and just funnel it to all these their satellite countries which is like Nide, Chad etc maybe not so Chad now but especially Nide Republic because I'll, I'll be damned if not all of them own property in Nide Republic they all go there to go and uh, do Islamic studies and whatnot and even I remember some uh, minister some time ago another minister using Nigerian money to build a school in the Jay Republic and they were questioning him and he was saying it was a hand of friendship thing and anybody that doesn't like it can get lost and uh, there was another person that was being interviewed on uh, television I think it's actually a governor of a state and they were saying now uh, how would the Fulanese coming from outside of Nigeria be benefiting from the Ruga project from the Ruga concept because that was at the height of Ruga then and then this governor who is a governor of a state was saying now uh, look my friend all Fulanese are Nigerians and the um, person 
press in interviewing him was alarmed that how can all Fulanis be Nigerians? Uh, I mean, there are Fulanis, a vast majority of Fulanis are outside of Nigerians. He says, look, Fulanis are free living people and they roam around that region and they consider themselves to be Nigerians. So therefore they are Nigerians. So what he's saying then in effect is that the wealth of Nigeria is there to satiate and satisfy and take care of the Fulani nation. So the Fulani nation, irrespective of where they are, they consider themselves to be Nigerian, especially to be a partaker in the oil wealth of the Niger region. And uh, th that is the end of it, effectively, what, what was what this guy uh, was saying. So now another drip in that trickle now is now this new narrative of this Mena fella who has funneled this money from Nigeria to Niger Republic because of course he would not have taken Naira to Niger Republic because uh, then he would have had to carry a bulk of Naira. So he would of course have converted it here and then taken it in cash there. And if he's taking it in cash, then of course, then that lent itself to the narrative that is an uh, illicit money. Is money ill-gotten? Is ill-gotten gain? So now that Aboki brawler passage is really what I wanted to highlight in this um, uh, video because these Malams have been doing it for a very, very long time converting uh, monies uh, stolen from the Nigerian state into hard currency and funneling needs especially to that Niger Republic. So now a little bit of a lead has been lifted here and we can smell the stench of it now. Conversations in the comment section they are looting us blind is what is going on. What are your thoughts? But before you come share thoughts click on the red subscribe button so it turns gray bell button notifies you every time i drop a new vid then come tell me what you are making of this mass looting that is going in, going on uh by the abokis and this guy by the way when he came back they reinstated him back into his position that was what happened he just went back to his desk and carried on like nothing happened so this is now how how low we have sunk within the nigerian state so come join me in the comment section let's have a chat about all these uh so I'll leave you here, join you in the comment section, but here I say peace.